Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back to another Into the Light series video. Now, I don't primarily focus on anything but high-end custom flashlights. It's a very rare occasion that I come out here with a, a budget flashlight or even a, a standard production flashlight, but this one is a really, really wonderful exception. Um, this is actually going to be the very first collaboration branded flashlight for Mastrop, and this is made by Lumentop. Now, you guys might remember, if you've watched my other videos, that I did do another video on a Lumentop. It was the Lumentop Prince. Fantastic light. I still carry mine. I love it. The ones that uh, uh, I did on the video, I believe, were copper. Uh, mine is the, uh, the all-steel version. I think they're really uh, an interesting light company giving you a lot of performance for very, very, very low cost. And they tend to design their lights in a way that look a little bit more like the custom lights that you would see out there. So they're definitely a brand worth looking into. But this particular light is made for mass drop. Now, before I get into the light and the specifications, let me get a couple of things out of the way just so that you know where to purchase it, how to purchase it, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. These are going to be $25, bucks, $24.99. That's it, $25. Bucks. Uh, they're going to be available exclusively, obviously, through Mastrop. When you go to Mastrop, if you've never shopped there before, what makes them interesting is, number one, they have different communities. I'm involved in the Everyday Carry community, the EDC community, which does flashlights and knives and other EDC gear. And there are a couple of different ways of buying. If there's something that you've seen on their site that isn't currently available, you can click a button to request it to come back again. Uh, and so far, this light, since it was announced just a few days ago, has had over 2,000 requests. People are ready to jump on this thing. And the cool thing is when you go to buy it, the more people that click that they want to commit to purchase it, the lower the price goes. Now this one's going to be at $24.99 because it is a product controlled by Mastrop, so they set the price and that's what it's going to be. They were actually able to drive it down further and further. I think this is going to be like $34, bucks, then it went to $30, bucks, now it's at $25. So that's the price they decided on. But when you get anybody else's product, which is normally how it goes, um, you know, maybe this light would come out there for 75 bucks, which may have been the retail. And the more people interested, the lower it's going to go. And when these sold, I think they were, I don't remember what they were, but it was, it was a very inexpensive price, and it was driven down from what the MSRP was. So it's an interesting system. The more people that get involved, it's, it's group buying is what it is. More people that get involved, the lower the price goes. Okay, so that's the whole mass drop thing. It will drop on January 31st, which is uh, Tuesday, January 31st. I'm getting this video out a couple days ahead of time so you can see the performance of the light, get some up-close views of it in HD, and decide if it's going to be the right light for you. Now, let's get into the specs. I'm going to get the box out of the way here and focus on this. Uh, I'm going to rattle down the spec sheet first, and then I'll give you my impressions of the light. That way makes it a little bit easier. You're going to have two choices, and I have them both sitting here. Uh, two different choices for emitters. When you go to purchase it, it'll give you the choice at checkout. You can either get the Cree XPG2, which is going to be an R5 bin LED, or the one that I have in here, which I'll also show you in a few minutes, is going to be the Nichia 219. Basically, the, the big differences that you want to know about those is this is a whiter light, this is a more natural light. Difference being this is going to appear brighter because it's, it's that bluish white light, so it appears to be a little bit brighter. This one's going to give you more depth of field, and it's going to give you better color perception, more natural color when you're shining the light on something. So that's your two big differences. If you want it to look as bright as possible, get the Cree XPG2. If you want the more natural light, you want to get the Nichia 219. Okay, so what we're looking at is a body made of solid brass. Let me get the camera to focus here. So the whole thing is made of solid brass. It's unusually lightweight. With the AAA battery inside, it's only an ounce and a half. And that's one of the things that I really, really appreciate about this. 
they have the max beam intensity listed as 553 candela. That's not going to mean a lot to a lot of you. The throw distance on high, because you have a three mode selector, the throw distance is about, <clears throat> excuse me, 154 feet. It's powered by a single AAA battery. And as I mentioned, you have three modes. So there is your low. That's five lumens. It's a, it's a great little uh, kind of like a candlelight. Uh, really good if you're, if you're reading off a piece of white paper. It's not blasting. when You can see what happens when you change into the different modes. How I can blast the light back at you. So the, uh, the low is five lumens. You're going to get four hours off a single AAA battery. The high mode is going to be 110 lumens, and you get about 30 minutes out of that, which is actually quite shocking for that single AAA battery. And uh, the medium mode, go back to the medium mode here, the uh, medium mode is 32 lumens, where you get four hours. Uh, and I misspoke earlier, the 32 lumens gives you 36 hours, I apologize. So five lumens, 36 hours. 32 lumens, 4 hours, 110 lumens, 30 minutes. You have a removable pocket clip. They list the waterproof rating as IPX8 with a 1.5 meter impact resistant uh, uh, dropping resistance. Working voltage is 0.9 to 1.5 volts and you're looking at 2.9 inches by just over a uh, it's actually 0.6 inches in diameter, and as I mentioned before, it's an ounce and a half. Now, uh, that's the basic specifications. The packaging, you're going to get the uh, mass drop clear box right here. You're going to get the light inside, and you're going to get a set of spare O-rings in there as well. So keep that in mind, that's what your packaging is going to be. Now, you've got a uh, tail click. Very simple to operate, very easy to use. Most of us are used to that. If you've got a light that you may possibly drop all the way into your pocket, I prefer not to have a side switch. And some people do side switches great, uh, but I've had a bad experience oh, a few months ago with a light that I was experimenting with. It was a fantastic light, but it had a side switch. I went to a concert that night, and I figured, okay, instead of carrying a $1,000 flashlight with me, just in case they decide to take it from me at security. I'm not worried about losing a $30 light. So I dropped it in my pocket. Everything went well until I got back into my vehicle that night after the show. And I got what we call hot pocket. I've got my seatbelt on. I'm starting to drive. And I get this horrible, intense burning from a 500 lumen aluminum flashlight burning its way into my thigh. Uh, it took a few seconds to throw the car into park and to get the seatbelt off and to reach into my pocket. So uh, from that day forward, uh, I have not carried anything with a side switch inside of my pocket. I prefer using a pocket clip, and you certainly can with this one. The great thing is, because of its diminutive size, this makes it perfect for everyday carry. So you can carry it clipped into your pocket like you normally would with your larger lights. However... If I'm dressed up and I want to be more discreet, I'm not going to carry a big, bulky, tool-looking flashlight. What I would rather do is simply pop the clip off and drop this down in my pocket. So if I'm wearing dress pants, I've got a small, very, very lightweight light that's down in the, uh, the pocket of my pants that I can very easily get to. It's not weighing me down. It's not really printing all that much in, uh, in those dress pants. So it's a really good option for you. This thing is actually a little powerhouse. When you hear 110 lumens, it doesn't really sound like a lot. But in practical application, a 100 lumen light is actually really, really usable. And if you go back just a few years, you know, we, we talk now about 1,000 lumen lights and two and 3,000 and just crazy ridiculous things that uh, have been able to be achieved. But if you go back just a few years, a 100 lumen light was staggering. To get into a 200 lumen light, you were looking at like a friggin' holy grail and nobody ever seen anything that powerful. So, you know, don't judge it based off of, well, it's only 100 lumens. 
it's actually really, really effective. Um, you've got a fair amount of spill here. Uh, the flood does drop off quite dramatically, so keep that in mind. And it's got a pretty good degree of throw. Again, this is a very tiny flashlight. It's only a little bit larger than the AAA battery that's inside of it. So for such a tiny light, it's actually got a good usable range. Another thing that you might like is you'll notice here it's got the, uh, the glowing green O-ring uh, to use as a locator. So if you have the light laying down, it's easier to find it because it's glowing. Uh, the tail cap is, excuse me, the tail switch is just barely recessed. Actually, it's not even recessed. It is pretty much flush with the tail cap. Uh, but there is a chamfered edge all the way around it, so it makes it kind of feel like it's recessed. So if you're putting it down on a, uh, a solid surface, it's not going to accidentally fire. It does not have any crenellations around the bezel, so if you've got it standing like this, you will not know if it's on or off. Keep that in mind. If you decide not to use the pocket clip or just to option it sometimes with and sometimes without, you do have a lanyard opening right here in the tail cap so you can run a, a small lanyard through there and just drop it in your pocket and leave the lanyard hanging out or whatever you prefer to do. Maybe you're out on the boat, you don't want to drop your light into the drink, so you got the lanyard wrapped around your wrist or around your fingers and you're not going to drop it because again it is, I mean that is super tiny. I mean it just it disappears in a closed hand. All right, let's take a look at the performance difference and the, uh, the color temperature difference between the uh, Cree XPG2 and the Nichia 219. So we're going to go ahead and get that out of there. And I believe also, yeah, so you can remove the tail cap or you can remove the head, doesn't matter. Now, here's one thing that you need to know. I did not know this when I first got the light. Uh, I thought, uh, how could I have gotten two defective lights in a row? When you get your light, you put the battery in it, you close it up, it's going to give you a quick flash to let you know the battery is working in there and you've inserted the battery correctly. Don't freak out when you hit the switch and it doesn't turn on. That's exactly what I did. I'm like, what the hell? These are brand new batteries. I know it works. Don't freak out. It's not defective. It takes about 15 seconds to charge up the, uh, I guess the light engine is, is the best way to put it. Uh, it has to charge up the light engine for about 15 seconds on the very first time that you put a battery into it. So once I learned that, I found out that, hey, oh wait, there we go. There we go. So they work just fine, but they won't work right away. So there's the high setting for, this is the Cree. Now you're not really able to see the yellow light all that well in here. And for some reason, it's not staging between the different modes. So I'm going to let that sit for just a couple of more minutes because it could be that it's not charged up. I've never heard of that before. Maybe some of you super flashlight geeks are used to that. I'm certainly not. Let's see if we can get it going now. There we go. Now that's very strange. Now there is a difference. It's just very subtle because I'm using um, white fluorescent lights here in my studio. So you're not really going to see it all that well. Let me see if I can kill one of the lights here. Actually, you know what? Let's kill all the lights all at one time. There we go. Now we can see the performance difference between the two. So as I mentioned, when you look at the, uh, the Cree XPG2, it is going to appear brighter. There's just no way around it. It's a very, uh, very white light. It's actually definitely more into the blue spectrum. So probably somewhere around 5,000K, I would guess. I don't have a listing on that, so we're going to have to go off of that. Whereas the Nichia, go ahead and turn this one off, is going to be much more neutral. It's a warmer tone. 
and the difference there for you performance wise is going to be <clears throat> they're really putting up the same amount of light your eye is just reading it differently for some folks I mean this is obviously not a search and rescue light it's too tiny for that but if you're out let's say in the woods and you're shining a light uh, to a whole bunch of trees that are at different distances with the wider the light the less depth perception you'll have everything will kind of look a little bit flat when you get into a yellower light or a more natural tone of light uh, your eye reads that differently it gives you greater capability for that depth of field and it represents colors to be more true now what I am going to do uh, typically I take the the lights out into my backyard and I give you a, you know a performance uh, difference but I'm used to doing it with stuff like this so remember this throws for about 155 feet it's again not a search and rescue light so I'm gonna change things up a little bit and just do it in a smaller area in the dark so that you can see how it performs in uh, kind of in a real-world situation so let's kick the lights back on here real quick let my camera adjust turn these bad boys off let me get a feel for it um, the Cree on high yeah it gets it gets a little bit warm but it's I can sit here and hold it in my hand and not have any issue uh, I was sitting there running what for a minute or two if I did that with uh, this one right here it dissipates heat fairly well with the carbon fiber body but the head does get pretty hot and my hanko over there uh, it does get pretty warm so uh, that's another great thing it's not going to be a super ridiculously hot light and that may just be from the material it could be the brass possibly dissipates heat a little bit better than some other materials all right this video is running a little bit long so I'm gonna cut it off here uh, just by saying I like the light I think it's a really great practical choice for everyday carry because of its size because of its very very lightweight the fact that you can uh, use the pocket clip or remove the pocket clip choose to use a lanyard or not having the uh, tail switch for me is a big deal I like having that and uh, that's pretty much it I mean I, I most of the, the guys I see in this size are usually twisties I prefer to have a one-handed flashlight that's just a personal preference so for me this kind of fires on all cylinders I really like the overall package and when you look at it for 25 bucks this could be your truck light your car light the the light that you just keep in the center console of your car for emergencies or in the in the saddlebag on your motorcycle or something like that it's small it's unobtrusive if something were to happen to it uh, you're not gonna cry too much because it was only 25 bucks we're gonna move on now outside and see how this looks in the dark so here we are outside and we're gonna start things off here with the Nichia here in my hands now normally I have the uh, light much 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 further away from the fence uh, I brought it up a lot closer so that you can actually see what it's doing and I'm gonna kind of tilt the camera down a little bit so that you can see what it's doing on the ground as well so this is more or less its natural habitat it's not really going to be made for long throw so there is the low that's the moonlight setting and there is the high we had started on medium so there is the high setting I gotta tell you it's it's a really 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 good performer now let's take a look at the difference here and of course the Cree does look tremendously brighter again with that very bright white light but as we see here every bit as functional and useful as a matter of fact you know I'm really looking at this and I'm thinking the performance is even better than I gave it credit for so let's take two seconds and let me set up and see just how far it really will throw and lumens you don't think it's going to be all that impressive but yeah that is really damn good even the moonlight setting is still somewhat useful but that high setting boy it really really goes and I don't know if you can quite see it right over there where I'm shining the beam I've got a little rabbit running around in the yard there he is right there you can see his eyes reflecting so let's try with the Nchia there's the Nichia on high see how everything looks a little bit more natural with that more yellow light than having that crazy bright white that's in there so that's the choices for you if you want to go more natural light or you want to go with the more white light 
those are your two choices both work extremely well and uh, oh yeah like we got like a little disco going here alright enough screwing around so there it is guys there's your side-by-side -side comparisons hope you enjoyed the video